Mohammed Abdin told us that he had met with another Mohammed Ali recently, and Ali proceeded to show him how to do some of his magic tricks. He will need some magic tricks tonight. And though the given name is Ahmad, he prefers Muhammad. It's his nickname, so to speak. That's why Michael Buffer introduced him as Muhammad Abdin. He prefers it. Because all of the promotion for the fight centered around his given name of Ahmad. We've kept our graphics that way. But if you hear somebody mention Muhammad, it's Abdin. Grant starts out working behind his big, heavy jab. 6'7", 250 pounds. This is the future of the heavyweight division, isn't it, Roy? Oh, yes, it is, most definitely. I mean, not just Michael, but guys of this size. These guys are harder to reach. The small guys are going to have them. Major hard times trying to get close enough to land punches on them, especially if they're using jabs like Michael Grant is starting out here tonight with. You know, we've talked about his high trunks and his cup, and maybe it's because he is so big and but it does look high. I have to, there's not much body to hit there. Yes, yeah, high, but I mean, think about it. It makes him have less of a target for his opponent to hit, and anything that's shy of a chest shot is going to be considered almost a low blow. Sure. So hey, you, if you can get away with it, do it. Absolutely. Eddie Cotton, the referee, took a look at it and said, this is okay. Hey, you use, that, use every advantage that you can get while you're out there trying to win. It's, an, it's a legal advantage. Nothing wrong with that. That, that, that left hand, that jab is a legal advantage, too. <laughs> that left jab has already created a red welt down the center of Abdeen's nose and a red welt to the outside of Abdeen's right eye. So Michael Grant is already doing some damage with the left jab in round number one. And Abdeen did uh, sort of brush Grant's whiskers with that left hook. i tell you what. If that dude is anything almost as tough as what his uncle was, it would have taken more than a left jab to stop him. Yeah, Mustafa Hamshio. Well, and, and he was a tricky fighter with every known trick in the book. Abdeen has landed the left hook to the body a couple of times, short with his right hand can see the scar on the back of Abdeen's skull. He says that as an infant, less than one year old, he was thrown out of a car in an automobile accident back in Syria. And he lay in the road, a baby wrapped in a blanket lying in the road as a 16-wheeler came toward him and the uncle who trains him in the ring rushed to the road and pulled him out of the way. Quite a story. You heard referee Eddie Cotton say that Abdeen's shot to the body was okay, and it did land square on the belt. So he's trying to enlarge the hitting zone in the body. I tell you, Michael Grant is showing a lot of patience here tonight, too. we never seen him start out like this with a jab establishing himself yet. But it's probably because of that long layoff he wants to come in and get comfortable again. Grant moving on his feet, firing the jab, apparently working on refurbishing his boxing skills in round number one. Grant's trainer, Don Turner, also trains Evander Holyfield and has stated quite openly in the past, if Grant ever fights Holyfield, he trains Grant. Keep going with that right hook. Right hook. You hit him right on it. Oh, well, right. Look, just wait for it. Take your time. Take your time. Okay, so we're coming. I'll give you the jab with double. Okay? It's all I'm going to do with double jab. I'll give you a mean. What I'll have for it. Okay? Take it. What Evander Holyfield has said, Jim, is that because of Grant's size, that if you can make him work hard enough, he believes that stamina will be a problem for him. Get out, get out, get out, let him go, get out, get out, get out. Yeah, but 
where is it written that you can't train a 250 pound body to go 12 rounds seems to me if you train hard enough stamina is not going to be a problem regardless of your size well it's written in in Evander's book on boxing and, uh, and I he knows more speak. than I do <laughs> <laughs> lands a left hook upstairs after a chopping left of the body, and then a right and a left, and a straight right for Abdeen. And if you're looking for a dark cloud in the blue sky of Michael Grant's prospects as a potential heavyweight champion, it is in opponent's connect percentage. CompuBox numbers show that against quality opponents, and Abdeen doesn't even necessarily rank in that category, but against the good fighters he's fought, they land 47% of their punches against Grant. They don't throw as many as they would against other fighters, but they land at a high rate. You know why? Why? Because Grant allows them to come inside and fight him. He does a lot more inside fighting than you would expect a guy of his size and status to do. He has, he's 6'8", he has long reach, but he fights inside, or he fights wherever his opponent wants to fight at. He doesn't avoid anything. Well, is it dangerous for him to allow opponents to connect 40% of the time? Should he... Should he fight more defensively or more carefully with regard to allowing opponents inside? I think he should, especially when he moves up to fight tough opponents. When you fight a guy, for instance, say he fought a guy like Mike Tyson. You don't want to allow Mike to hit you at will because one shot from Mike in the fight can be over with. Yep. Well, you know, percentage is, is also a function of how many punches are thrown at him. If, if 40% is 10 punches thrown and four landed, that's not a big deal. If it's 50 punches thrown in a round and 20 landed, that could be a bigger deal. Well, what it's been is 30 punches and 14 or 15 landed. Two, so, two minutes for me. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> if it's two punches and one land, it's two minutes for me. Well, I guess the first surprise here is that Abdeen is not really co that concerned with getting inside of Grant's long reach. He's fighting him primarily from outside. He doesn't have to be because Mike's going to come to him anyway. Mike, like I said, Mike doesn't care where he fights that. He just wants to fight. That's one good thing about him. I mean, he doesn't care. He'll fight wherever his opponent wants to fight at. If you want to fight him inside, he'll fight you inside. If you want to fight outside, he'll fight you outside. You heard Don Turner tell Grant to get off the ropes, and here is why. One solid punch in there. And what you look for in a young fighter is not only his ability to punch, but what happens when he gets there. And he responded very calmly, Grant, and dominated the rest of the round. CompuBox numbers, Ahmad Abdeen has landed 19 power shots in the first couple of rounds. That's more than Grant. He's only landed 10 out of 25. Grant has been focusing on his jab. Dean lunging forward with a wide sweeping left hook, and it touches the face of Michael Grant. Not really a solid connect, but it was there. How much of what we're looking at, Roy, do you think is attributable to the fact that they know each other so well? Uh, a great deal of it, of it because uh, Alfred knows that Michael Grant is not going to be running from him, so he doesn't have to make no uh, make a, a big adjustment to like try to chase him or to try to get inside because you know Mike's going to be right there. And Mike's not worried about anything because he's felt Abdon's punch of power before, so he's not feeling any pressure from being hit by Abdon. Grant 
takes that Dean's left hook. Gets against the ropes, and then Eddie Cotton separates them. You wonder when Michael is going to try to drop a big right hand over the top. Where's the right hand, Roy? I don't even know if he's going to try it anytime soon. I think he's trying to wait, find some other openings first. Well, look, look where our Dean's left glove is. It's, it's every time it looks like Grant is coming in to throw punches, it's right up there around his eye bone. Nice quick little right hook inside by Grant. Through the guard of Abdeen. Grant, you see the shoulder movement, head movement, double jab. He himself says, gosh, I might rather be in the NFL playing in the Super Bowl. I think I was that good. I might rather be in the NBA getting a big contract. I think I was that good, but I chose boxing. And he says boxing's much tougher than any of those other sports because here you have to be ready 24-7. You can't call a timeout and have somebody else come in and take over for you if you're not effective. March 8th, HBO Sports presents the next edition of Sports of the 20th Century, Dare to Compete, The Struggle of Women in Sports. This documentary chronicles the history of women in sports, depicting how the suffrage movement, the 60s, and Title IX helped set the stage for today's female athletes, Dare to Compete, starting March 8th, another premier documentary from HBO Sports. because he feels that Abdeen has seen the right and is prepared to counter it. That's why I think he's not throwing it. Because Abdeen has seen it so much until he knows that that's probably Michael's bread and butter. Until Jeff Dean seems like a bright young man. One reason is because uh, when he went to work for Grant, he said Don Turner already knew him because he had previously worked with Holyfield. Therefore, when Turner offered him $750 a week, he said, no, I won't do it for less than 1000 figuring that he had shown enough against Holyfield that he could get Don Turner to give him the raise. And he was right. He got $1,000 a week. seeing Michael Grant use the jab tonight. Good low blow by Grant. And the crowd thinks that Abdeen is over-dramatizing, but it was solid. You, uh, you got it for five minutes, okay? Take your time, you got it for five minutes, all right? Eddie Cotton, incidentally, okay. Take your time. is the Once man who disqualified Andrew Gulotta for low blows hold it, hold in the it. second bow fight. Okay. Well, you know, if take your time, walk, walk it off, walk it off. Okay. If, got a point. One point, low blow. One point, low blow. Now I'm, I'm a little surprised by that. He hasn't warned him before this. Um, and in fact, one of the interesting things here is, is that if Grant is wearing his trunks and his protective cup high, Dean appears to hear, to wear it low. Okay. What do you okay, think, Roy? Go, was he over-dramatizing, or was he that badly hurt? I think it was over-dramatizing, but I would like to see it again on the replay. Well, maybe you'll get a chance between rounds. 
I can't guarantee it. Producer Dave Harmon guarantees it. With regard to replays, he's the man. Has Grant gotten into that zone yet, Larry, where he must produce a spectacular performance every time out that, that something good and workmanlike is no longer good enough? Probably. If, if all of the praise and expectations that have been laid on him uh, has to be sustained in order for him to get the notice of the public, in order for him to get a shot at a title. Yeah, he has to he has to look good. He's dominant here, but he hasn't he hasn't uh, shown the kind of stuff that has uh, attracted everybody to him yet. Maybe it's because of his uh, recent idleness. Maybe it's because he's in with a sparring partner. He hasn't let go yet, apparently. Dean talking to Grant as he bears in against Michael in the corner. And you saw Michael holding the left hand out as if to say, I'm going to hit you in the ribcage again. I think Michael Grant is overly impressive every time he goes out. His size is enough to impress anybody. He has punching power. He has such a big frame that it makes you want to see what he's going to do next time. Great, Mike, great. That really make him simple. Okay. That really make him simple. Huh? That really make him simple. Okay. He don't like the body shots, man. Really don't. He's not tough enough. No, no, he ain't. Hey, look, look. Just do a fight. Do a fight. Man, man nobody man. puts water on back now. Okay? Okay? okay. okay. Now that's right there now. Okay. Roy, here's your replay. Low blow, let's take a look. No. I don't take that as necessarily a low blow. That's above the low blow area. Now, it's on the borderline of the cup, but the cup is right on the navel line, which is not a low blow. Two inches on the navel is not a low blow. Well, it was his second punch. <laughs> right. It was called the low blow. I'm still surprised that he took a point away without having warned him previously. And I don't think Abin could have hurt, been hurt so badly by the punch that he needed as much time as he took to recover from it. But he's entitled. <laughs> yep. How do you have it through four? You know, Jim, you might as well use the rules. If you got five minutes, I take five minutes. What the heck? Three rounds for Michael Grant. One round even. 39-36, Michael Grant. Uh, round four, I thought Michael Grant won with that left jab. He just keeps pecking away with it. But when referee Eddie Cotton took the point, it becomes a 9-9 round. Michael Grant is wearing that supporter high, just like we talked about before the fight. It's really not a, you know, at the legal level. It's too high. One other thing I want to point out, Jim, Michael Grant, and he's... And he's not allowed to do this. Pushes off a lot or grabs Ahmed Abdeen behind the neck, behind the head. It's illegal. You can't push off with an open glove. You can't grab Abdeen behind the head as a defense. Lennox Lewis gets away with it. Doesn't he, Harold? But, Jim, it doesn't make it right. Okay. See, Cotton won them two or three times for grabbing behind the head. He hasn't won them for pushing off. Watch Michael Grant push off with the open glove when Ahmed gets inside. They don't often put off the one guys for pushing off anyway. I think Evander Holyfield pushed Mike Tyson off all night, both, uh, both times they fought. And got a lot of credit for it, as I, a matter of fact. I think he did. So I don't really remember a fight where the referee really warned the guy too much for pushing off. The referees push you off sometimes. It makes the referee's job easier. At least he doesn't have to push these two. 250 pound guys around. <laughs> Last combination, combination to the body by Grant. The pesky Abdeen continues to lean in against the big heavyweight phenom and Abdeen landing at a higher percentage than Grant throughout the fight. His face shows the damage of their combat, but Grant has not been able to back Abdeen off with his power. Nothing FD hasn't seen before. Grant missing with an uppercut. Kind of 
pulling up on a right cross. Nice job, nice job. Michael Grant's right hand, not yet explosive in the fight. His left jab has been dominant. And that beam now firing punches off of Grant's shoulders as Michael uses that big frame to protect himself. And that's another good quality about a smart fighter. He brings what's necessary to, for the job to the table. He needs a left jab tonight more so than anything else. So that's... Ten. A little left hook to punch away down for Grant. One more edition of the show the pros watch inside the NFL. Thursday, February 4, we debut this final edition, 11 o'clock Eastern and Pacific time. Highlights of tomorrow's Super Bowl game. So join Len, Chris, Nick, and Jerry for their final comments on the 1998 season and their wrap-up of the Super Bowl, whatever happens tomorrow. Get busy. Okay? Get busy. second half of the fight is not just the craftsmanship and obvious skills that such a big man has, but I'm looking for a little passion, a little trying to make something happen. See, and I'm Michael Grant, and I'm going to dominate you. I'm not going to move away from you as much as I've been moving now. I'm going to stand here and let's go. It's a relatively quiet crowd in the upstairs room here at the convention center. Knowledgeable boxing crowd, so no doubt many of them are here for the specific purpose of looking at Grant and confirming or denying in their own minds whether he deserves his present status <clears throat> as the number three man in the division behind Lewis and Holyfield. And Grant does have a little bruise under his left eye. Abdeen has not backed off a bit. Hard left hand shot to the body by Grant. Backed up Dean up into the ropes. Through long stretches of the bout, Grant fighting up Dean virtually one handed, using the left hand alone to do his business. It takes a lot of discipline to do that, Jim. Especially for a young fighter. Guy with virtually no amateur career. As Larry mentioned, Richard Steele, the famed Vegas referee, met Grant when Grant came Great. as a spectator to the first uh, bout between Evander Holyfield and Riddick Bowe, November 6, 1992 at the Thomas and Mack Center in Las Vegas. Steele guided him into the hands of Jack Mosley, well known now as the father of world lightweight champion Shane Mosley. And Mosley started him out in the gym in LA and taught him the rudiments of boxing. That was in 1992 and 93. Grant had been a football linebacker and tight end and a front court rebounding star in basketball, both in his native Chicago and in junior college in California. Grant. 
two redheads tonight for round guard girls. It's an upset. You don't often see it. The preponderance of blondes and brunettes is so overwhelming in the sport that 90% of the time you would see no redheads at all. But tonight, a double redhead shot for round guard girl action in Atlantic City. Right left combination to the head of Grant at the end of that round. But it probably did not salvage the round for uh, Abdeen, who, who himself now is obliged, if he wants to win rather than simply to survive, to make something happen, to open up. And and maybe this has been too much like a sparring match between former sparring partners that sometimes happens it's probably one of the toughest things for general sports fans to good understand left. about boxing good left hook by grant huh? yeah and i think it shook Abdeen momentarily but he comes right back roy I, I i think there are large segments of the general sporting public who will never fully understand or appreciate how difficult it is even for a top fighter to knock out an opponent who only wants to survive yeah, it's very difficult because that opponent is going to take as less chances as possible right. he doesn't open himself up it's like trying to get to a turtle's head while he's always in the shield something like jesse ferguson was able to pull off against andrew galata earlier this evening there you go in going 10 rounds against an utterly dominant galata Grant's body shots, and he stepped up the pace to the body in the past two or three rounds, seem to be having a cumulative effect on Abdeen. He seems to be wearing Abdeen down a little bit. See, this is the part about uh, the sparring that Abdeen didn't get to see. They get out, get out, go get over six or eight rounds, so when it gets late in the fight, the sparring partner does not know how to react. Grant says that if he bides his time and stays patient, his opponents will all tire against him because the extra effort they put forth in fighting against a so much larger man saps them more than they realize. And that could be a possibility. And that's what I think Michael is waiting on here. Abdeen reaching across the top to try to get in a right hand. This is the first round in which Abdeen has shown in his face something like a look of you don't want to discouragement, but just as I say it, he whacks Grant with a left hook and pounds him with another right hand. Well, I think Grant's body punches are really, really weakening him. Despite all the leather Abdeen has tried to throw and those punches we've seen him land, Grant's face is unmarked, while Abdeen begins to show quite an array of welts and scratches. Grant's face is marked a little. He has a little swelling under that left eye. Oh, yeah, you're right. I take it back. There you got it, right there. Sometimes these fights between big men, particularly a young, talented, promising guy we're all expecting big things from, uh, can be a little 
little bit like watching a sausage being made. It's not always pretty, but it's necessary. softening him up with a series of jabs. Uh, you know, I think what's happened here, Roy, is that Abdeen came out determined to neutralize the right hand of Grant, which is his most dangerous punch, and in effect dare him to beat him with, with his left. And that's exactly what Grant is doing. It's sort of like trying to stop the running game and tell us you got to beat us with your passing game or vice versa. And a smart team takes what the, op what, what the opposite team gives him. He's giving Grant the left hand in the jab, and that's what Grant's taking. Abdeen needs to be the one fighting the hardest when he's inside because he can throw bigger and harder punches in that because his arms are shorter. Instead, he holds on quicker than Grant does. Grant lands a little right uppercut in there. Abdeen grabs and holds. Break, break. Certainly can't fault Grant for patience here. He's been composed throughout, as was the line earlier this evening. Abdeen. Blood starting to flow in the middle of Abdeen's face as Grant continues to pound him with that left jab. Yeah, and one more thing Grant has to learn is he has to learn how to land that big right hand from right out there where he's landing that jab from. He's jabbing, jabbing, trying to set up the right, but there it is. That was. His body usually is a little too close by the time he completes the second jab to land the right hand. He was about an inch short with a right hand that might have been his biggest punch in the bout so far. Right. What are you holding your right hand? Huh? You hurt the hand. Yeah. Listen, you can get it fixed after. You know that. <laughs> you can beat anybody with a left hand. You ain't drawing enough left hand. I'm sorry, let it stay. Okay, yellow lights. Okay. Take a deep breath. Deep breath. Back to Oba and Jola. Back to throw ball combination. Every time you hit him in the body, you want to quit. That's why you don't like them body shots. Perhaps a revealing conversation between trainer, trainer and Michael Grant. He says, where's your right hand? Why aren't you throwing it more? And we couldn't hear what Grant said, but he may have indicated that he heard it. Uh, and you heard Turner say, well, we'll take care of that later. Uh, and you can beat anybody with your left hand. Yeah, so there's every indication there that Grant has hurt his right hand. Yeah, but I don't know where he could have hurt it at. <laughs> he must have hurt it in training. I didn't think he landed in the big punches, but there again, he could have landed a shot on the elbow or something that really did hurt it. You can hurt it on the elbow, you can hurt it on the top of the head. Harold, how do you have it so far? Jim, I think he heard it on the top of Abdeen's head. Uh, I got it. I got it a shot out. Seven rounds from Michael Grant. One round even when, uh, you know, the uh, fourth round when referee Eddie Cotton took away a point for a low blow. Michael Grant just keeps that left jab in Abdeen's face. And although Abdeen's landed a few good punches in this fight, he never follows it up. He lands one good punch and he grabs, he holds, he backs up. I mean, so far, Michael Grant's in complete control. Gets off first. He's the aggressor. Landing more jabs. And, and he's winning it with that left jab. Well, Maybe we've got the wrong fight here. Maybe this should have been Grant against Galata and Abdeen against Ferguson. <laughs> well, 
Well, then we would have only had to televise one of them. Yeah, because I don't think many people would have cared to see how <laughs> Abdomen, Abdomen would have did against Ferguson. Great. But the Grant Galata fight Both would have families. been very interesting. <laughs> Both families, large and wonderful families, I'm sure they would have been interested. Oh, yeah. Grant Galata, that'll be something to see. If it ever happens. For the boxing media. Another body shot by Grant, this time with the right hand. So he's willing to throw the right to the body. And there's an uppercut. And you have to give it to Abdon. He is tough, and he's staying in here with Grant. Although Grant being much bigger than he is, he's taking some great shots from Grant. And he's getting pe paid better than $1,000 a week, which is what he got as a sparring partner. And if you've had a long layoff, as Grant has had, sometimes having to go some rounds is a blessing in disguise. Probably at the end of the night, if he has to settle for a decision against Abdeen, Don Turner, the trainer, will say, well, it was a lot of good work. And Abdon is still trying to land a big punch here. shots and Grant is trying to make them like them even less. Grant listening well as trainer Don Turner told him every time you land a body shot he wants to quit. There you go. And you can see it on that beat. Three. Four. Okay. All right. First knockdown okay. of the bout. First knockdown of the evening. Okay. okay. That's a knockdown. That's a knockdown. Eddie Cotton it's says like it's a knockdown. It was a knockdown. Watch move. Watch move, and Abdeen baby. does have a look that seems to say, I don't want too many more of those body shots. Yeah, see, these are the rounds that he didn't get a chance to see in the gym when he fought with Michael Grant. <laughs> Take a look. There were five or six or seven clear, hard blows to the stomach. There you see a little uppercut intercepted by Abdeen's ample little belly. <laughs> I don't think it was little. I don't think anything Michael Grant can do is little. Grant, who existed off the jab through much of the bout, unloading 41 power shots in round nine, the majority of them to the body, and he landed more than half, 23. Letterman calling it an eight-point round. I don't know why they're putting grease on Abdin's head. They ought to put it on his belly. <laughs> Ahmad Abdin willing to come out for more. Bout is scheduled for 12. You know, we've talked, uh, Roy, about how Abdin has his left hand up there. He's really very conscious of Grant's, Grant's right hand all fight long. And he's managed to neutralize it, but at considerable expense because he's a beaten up fighter good right hand oh. good right hand by Grant and Abdeen goes down like the proverbial sack of potatoes that was a good shot as soon as Abdeen opened up with an attempt to try something he got nailed by that right hand as soon as he opened up he came out last year and that's what happened when he comes out last year so Abdeen electing to go for broke in the 10th round and pays the price as Michael Grant, while backing up, lands a little right-hand shot that puts Abdeen on the floor. Abdeen hates it to the body, and Grant goes straight back to the midsection there. Abdeen trying to convince Eddie Cotton that he's being hit with low blows. <laughs> Eddie Cotton won't go for it. They aren't low blows. They're right on the bare surface of Abdeen's skin. He doesn't even want to get hit in the chest anymore. Go ahead, Larry. No, I'm getting so you got two more. Let's go. I think after one through five minutes now. And Grant getting a chance to try to load up a right hand shot. Seemed to pull the punch just a little bit at the end. Maybe that right hand is hurt in some way. So they're 
have been two knockdowns, one in round nine with a body shot, and one in round ten on a right hand to the head. And now for the first time in the fight, Abdin is seriously on the run away from Grant. Get out, get out, get out, get out. With good reason. stop this fight. I think he really doesn't want any more. Yeah, it's over. I think the doctors give it up. Uh, Uncle Hisham is saying he's all right. Been stopped on the recommendation of the doctor. There you see a left jab. The finishing blow of the salvo. A thoroughly beaten up. But game 